Hey everyone, welcome back to the Basics of Beta Flight series, where today we're going to discuss putting your flight controller into DFU mode. Before we get started, I just wanted to mention that I am going to put more effort into trying to keep these videos much shorter than the first two were. Um, they did get a little lengthier than I want for this particular series. I want to try to keep the videos around five minutes. So that's why this part today, I'm going to break into the flight controller portion of DFU mode. And then the next video afterwards is going to be installing the drivers for DFU mode. I want to do everything I can to keep these videos as short and as simple as possible. Let's get into it and let's take a look at our different flight controllers. I'm going to show you four different methods to put your flight controller into bootloader mode. Not all methods work with all flight controllers, so sometimes you have to try one or two techniques before you will actually get your flight controller into bootloader mode. And today I've selected several different examples, that of which you're most likely to run into while trying to put your flight controller into DFU or bootloader mode, which incidentally, those are both the same, just different names. But anyway, let's take a look at these boards that I have in front of me. I have three different flight controllers here. I have a B-Core, I have a SP Racing F3, and I also have an Omnibus F3. So let's take a look at the different configurations on these. This board here is an Omnibus F3. It's a very reliable and common flight controller. They were very popular, probably a little bit more than a year ago, and are still incredibly reliable. Putting this board into bootloader mode is relatively simple because they've actually attached a button in order to perform that function. So if you have a button on your board, this is how you're going to enter bootloader mode. What I'm going to do is I'm going to depress the button and I'm going to plug in my USB cable powering up the board while pushing and holding the button and that's all there is to it on this one. So this board is now in bootloader mode. I can flash firmware if I don't want to in order to exit. Just simply reboot the board by unplugging power and plugging it back in again and it'll come up 100% like normal. This flight controller is a SP Racing F3. This was a very, very popular controller about two years ago. In fact, if you bought an Ishin Wizard, chances are it came with one of these pre-installed. This board is a little bit different, where instead of typically pushing a button, you're going to short two pins together. Now, in order to make life easy for myself, I soldered a button across the two pins on the board. So in the case, when I was ready to flash firmware, all I would have to do is just push and hold the button and simply plug in USB, just like I did on the other flight controller. But if you don't have the skills to solder a button, you're unsure how to do it, or you just don't have a button, all you need to do on this board is short these two pins together. You can do it with solder, you can do it with a piece of wire, you can do it with a screwdriver. Essentially, all that's important is these two pads are touching when you do go ahead and power up the flight controller. So showing you the two methods that I have on this board. A, I can push and hold the button and plug in the USB and enter bootloader mode. Alternately, if I don't have the button, which I will simulate from the underside of the board, all I really need is a small piece of wire or anything else that can be used to short these two pins together. However, I do recommend being very careful if you're doing this method because if you slip, you could accidentally short something and damage your board. So be very careful if your method requires you to short two items together. Maybe use a precision screwdriver. Something like this might help in order to short the two of those together. So again, this is the pin method. You simply short the two pins together that are labeled boot. It doesn't matter how you do it, as long as they're shorted before applying power to the board, which typically is going to be your USB cable. And last but not least, here's an old Tiny Whoop flight controller. As a matter of fact, this is an old B Core FR Sky, and this was my first FR Sky Tiny Whoop flight controller. I have burned it out long ago 
but it still works great for this example because I can show you a different style of pad that you may have to interface with in order to put your board into bootloader mode. On this particular board, there's two pads right in the center that are labeled boot. This is not an uncommon thing for this style of flight controller. However, more manufacturers are starting to include buttons on smaller controllers just simply because it's easier and more convenient. I have a couple different methods for putting this style of pad into bootloader mode. The first method is again using a metal device. I can short these pads together and plug in my USB cable which will then put the board into bootloader mode. I do recommend being very careful if you're using this method because it's super easy to slip and short something out. I exit boot motor load just by unplugging the board. The second method I can use to put the board into bootloader is probably a little bit safer with these little teeny tiny pads, but it does require a little bit of soldering. And what I'm going to do is I'm just simply going to put a bead of solder and short these two pads together, and that's it. So hopefully you can see that both of these pads are touching now and without using any other devices except for just simply plugging the board in a USB it'll go right into bootloader mode for me very easily. Now if I leave that pad connected every single time I apply power to the board it's going to want to enter bootloader mode. So to stop this from happening we're going to have to wipe the solder off of that boot pad. I'm going to have a nice clean tip on my soldering iron. I'm going to get myself a good angle here and I'm simply just going to wipe that solder away. You saw how easy that was, but now these pads are no longer touching and when I plug the board back in, it no longer enters bootloader mode. And finally, we have one more method that we can use in order to put our board into DFU or bootloader mode, which is much easier than the previous methods, depending on how comfortable you are using the command line interface. But still, it's very, very simple to do. I'm going to plug my flight controller in a USB. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open Betaflight. I'm going to make sure that I'm connected to the correct COM port and I'm going to say connect. Now I'm going to go over to my CLI and this is important because we need to know what version of software that the board has in it because the command will differ depending on your version of Betaflight. So the first thing I'm going to do to verify is I'm going to type in version into the command line and I'm going to hit enter. It's going to tell me the target for the board and it's also going to tell me the version of beta flight that the board is currently running. Since I'm on version 317, I know the proper command for this board is DFU. I'm going to hit enter and it's going to make the board reboot and it's going to force it to go into DFU mode. In this instance, because we have not installed the DFU driver yet, that is coming up in the next episode. We'll see here when I click on my COM port that I do not have a DFU selection. That DFU selection is going to be important when it comes time to flash the firmware, but we're going to get into that a little bit down the road once we're ready to actually do a firmware install. And finally, the last command to put your board into bootloader mode. This works on beta flight 3.2 and beyond, where the previous command is for beta flight 3.17 and previous. If you have a newer flight controller, chances are this is the command that you're going to be using. Again, it's very simple. Just simply connect to Betaflight, go over to your CLI tab, and what we're going to type in is BL for bootloader mode, and I'm going to hit enter. In this case, the flight controller doesn't know the command because it's an earlier version of Betaflight, but that's okay. You can try either or if you're not sure because one of them is going to work and the other one is not. With the purpose of keeping these videos short, and as much to the point as I possibly can, I think that's all we're going to go over in this one. 
Of course, if you guys have any questions, you can always feel free to contact me. I'll be more than happy to answer what you have. I hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe if you did, I can convince you to click on that like button. Maybe you'll subscribe. I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed. Maybe if you have an opportunity, maybe if you have some spare time and some money to spend, head over to hotdogfpv.com where you can get the best goggle straps on the planet and some really cool FPV swag. But that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>